Hi everyone, welcome to this Make a Medic tutorial. Today we're going to be talking about the differences between the pyramidal and the extrapyramidal pathways. So neuroanatomical pathways are one of those things that people tend to find quite difficult to get their heads around when they first get exposed to it in the preclinical years. However, it is important to have some level of understanding of the different types of pathway to really be able to grasp certain neurological conditions. So I've tried to break down the pyramidal and extrapyramidal systems as simply as possible. So this is very much an oversimplification. However, I feel like it's enough to be able to understand the disease entities that affect these two pathways. So first and foremost, this is our cerebral hemisphere. And within the medial part of the frontal lobe, we have the primary motor cortex. So this is where the neurons arise, which allow us to carry out certain voluntary movements. So from the primary motor cortex, we have upper motor neurons, which go down towards the pyramids of the medulla. And that's where they cross the midline and they form two separate tracts. So we have the corticospinal tract, which as the name suggests, goes down the spinal cord and is responsible for providing an innovation to the skeletal muscles of our limbs and our torso. And then we also have the cortical bulbar tract, which branches off a bit earlier on, and is responsible for the innovation of the muscles in our head and neck. So the pyramids of the medulla are given that name because the convergence of those pathways coming from the primary motor cortex creates this sort of upside down pyramid type shape. And given that this pathway is centered around the pyramids of the medulla, is referred to as the pyramidal pathway. And as I mentioned at the start, it comes from the primary motor cortex and it's responsible for our voluntary movements. The extrapyramidal tract, on the other hand, is not necessarily a discrete anatomical entity within the brain. It actually consists of several different parts of the brain, including the basal ganglia, the cerebellum, and the vestibular nucleus. However, for the sake of simplicity, I've shown it as one blue blob on this diagram. So what the extrapyramidal pathway does is that it moderates the signals coming down from the primary motor cortex and makes the movements far more fluent. So this is an involuntary system. So one of the neurology registrars at the hospital I work at used a very nice example which helped put it into context. So he said that the pyramidal pathway is a bit like the accelerator in a car. When you want to create some sort of movement, that's the bit that fires. So it's like pressing down on the accelerator. The extrapyramidal tract, on the other hand, is a bit like the clutch. So it makes the movements smoother. So in terms of the disease entities that can affect these two pathways, strokes are an example of something that can affect the primary motor cortex and hence the pyramidal system. And Parkinson's disease is an example of something that affects the extrapyramidal tract, as it causes the degeneration of dopaminergic neurons within the substantia nigra of the basal ganglia.